Hi guys, I got with me Chase from Definitive Arms and uh, we have a beautiful old Polish AK on the table, the full auto version, lucky you. Uh, but Chase, uh, let's tackle once and for all uh, the question about the gauges head spacing on the AK. Okay. Uh, let me start off, uh, first of all we got two major standards across the world. The CIP, which is mainly for the European products. Correct. Uh, and then we got, of course, SEMI, which guards the regulations or standards inside the United States. Still, uh, if you have a no-go or go or field gauges, either from SEMI or uh, from CIP standard, you can use them on both types of the AKs made either in the US or uh, outside the US because the differences are really, truly minimal. And speaking about the no-go gauge, I would say that the no-go gauge, either CIP or SEMI, the, the rifle when it's closing on a no-go gauge, either, either, either one of these two, that's a big problem. But let's start from the beginning. Chase, how you are basically doing the correct head spacing check? Because I show very often in the videos, but we are in the field in a hurry, so we're just going uh, roughly through the. We're putting. I'm basically putting a no-go gauge on the on the face of the bolt, and then I'm pushing the bolt carrier inside and l applying the light pressure, not too much light pressure, and checking if the rifle is closing. Because it is no secret if you will put enough pressure, you can close it. Close it on everything. Well. There's a couple different ways of going about it, and uh, you know, at the point of manufacture, you know, you really want to check with a completely stripped bolt. You don't want the extractor sure. claw in. And at that, what I generally will tend to do is, before we have, you know, we put the barrels in before we assemble the rest of the front end. I will pull the piston on the carrier with a loose bolt and see will the carrier actually cam the bolt over and come all the way forward and stop on one of the two contact points on the trunnion. Now, for what you're talking about doing, checking it in the field, trying to measure the progress of a gun sure. that could possibly be degrading prematurely and failing. You know, there's a couple ways to go about it. Um, oftentimes, I like to see the bolt by itself and uh, you know, with a assembled bolt in field conditions, you could take the gauge, snap it right under the extractor claw, and bring it right in. And one of the things you'll look for is on top here, this mm -hmm. is the lug that sits inside mm -hmm. of the camming pocket of the carrier. Will it come over and touch mm -hmm. the side of the rail? Clearly the carrier would go completely home. This is a go gauge, it closes on the Absolutely. go gauge. And it, the, you should completely rotate and close on that right shoulder. You can you can see the progress how how the locking locks are interacting with it. And this gun does so mm -hmm. with much ease. This gun has sure. a lot of rounds fired through it. Likewise, and, and this is a go gauge. Just right. Do not right. not think that we are closing on the no go gauge right now. So. Likewise, I'm going to do the same thing and take the no-go gauge mm -hmm. and even as old as this gun is and how many rounds are through it, you can see it starts to turn, but and you know, even you with pressure, yep. it won't come down yep. Yep, absolutely. and uh, it would be a little easier to check this with the carrier as well if you had a stripped bolt, mm -hmm. generally speaking, trying to force them into the chamber and forcing the extractor claw all over them is not the best way of going about doing it. If you're careful, you can come in, snap it underneath the claw. And drive it there in you and just and you can give it you don't want to handle it too hard but you'll give it a little bit of a wiggle sure. drive it around and make sure it's not just caught up on a tight spot or a burr or something like that and you can see even with a good exactly. bit this one yep. doesn't want to close yeah. on this, the no-go i'm usually just applying the pressure with my thumbs and, and mm -hmm. trying to, to push it that way but you know like sometimes if you will see me like gaining the speed on the on the carrier and, but I'm always pu putting a disclaimer, that's not the correct really way of doing it. And with the retard strength, you can close on, the, on, the, on everything. That's what I'm saying to you guys. Do not, you know, there is, there is amount of the force, but you shouldn't really overcoming with a lot of force. It's, well, it's, you'll see a lot of guys who will just they'll load the thing in like they're Liberty loading around and yeah. just drop and, the carry home with the and, spring. And you've got to remember, barrels cannot be extremely hard or they would sure. shatter. They're, they're generally not as hard as say like the bolt or the trunnion is. And so you have a hardened tool steel gauge getting driven and that mm -hmm. energy driving it in, chamber. you can actually damage the barrel and you'll get a reading that's inaccurate because you've damaged the barrel in place. It's generally a really bad idea to use the loading mechanism to install Absolutely. the gauge. But 
This is in the nutshell, guys, how you can do it in the field or if you want to play a little bit more and just do it with the boat, both ways work. Now, Chase, let's tackle another issue because very often uh, we are hearing that it's okay for the rifle to close on the no-go gates. Well, that's why they have essentially, you know, no-go gauge two, which is mm -hmm. the field gauge. Is the idea that, you know, back in like, uh, you know, say the 30s and 40s, you know, metallurgy tech was still coming of age, so they would have to time, you know, bolt actions, they'd have to time military arms, and at the factory, before anything had been fired in it and they'd handled high pressures, it was to pass a go and no-go gauge, and the idea is some of these metals, they've got pretty good toughness, but under their first bit of use, they'll kind of forge into position, exactly. they'll move a little, and they'll stop. And the idea is that if you've got 10,000 rounds through the gun, it's worn in. Maybe it's barely eaten that no-go gauge, but if it's still passing the field, it's saying, on a whim, it's still safe to use. And another you know, case of ammo, keep checking it. It never ends up swallowing the field. The idea was that you had a measurement point at the point you set it, and then as it got used, it might have stretched a little, mushed a little, forged into place. And generally, the type of materials is used from as they compact, their hardness will increase some, you know, like work hardening, just like forging, you're compressing the same volume into a smaller volume, and they'll kind of stop, and that's where the field gauge really comes into play to say, sure. hey, this has moved some from where it's originally set, but you're still okay to go. If you see a progression and it starts to eat the field, that's when you really need to stop because you're looking at a hand grenade at that point. From my experience with dozens and dozens of thousands of rounds shot on the AKs, I'll tell you that you should never ever see the AK closing on the either brand new, it should never close on the no-go gauge. Correct. It's, it's, that's right away red flag. But within the 5,000 rounds, I don't want to see the rifle closing on the no-go gauge. Absolutely. It's, a, it's 21st century guys, different tools, <laughs> different, uh, different kind of materials we got, and there is no excuse for the rifle to close on the no-go gauge after 5,000 rounds only. That's nothing. Like, literally, that's absolutely nothing. That, that That's a very right. small round count. So, but I totally agree with the field gauge. The field gauge is like a last resort. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would say this, the moment you have a problem, the moment the rifle closes on the no-go gauge, if you don't feel comfortable doing the inspection yourself, have the experienced gunsmith to look into the issue because there may be other problems attached to it. And it, it could, could be, be a it. lot of reasons. Absolutely. I mean, we oftentimes, as we're testing American AKs, we look at the metallurgy, we see, you know, the cookie crumbling trunnions and stuff. Sometimes you could have perfectly inspect parts, but somebody used a once used barrel, and if the original slot for the barrel pin was a, has a little bit of a gap, the barrel could be walking forward. Absolutely. Your metallurgy could be fine, and um, you know, it's, it's just a sign showing that progressively somewhere something's coming apart and you're leading towards danger. That's the bottom line, like as I said, because, you, and you may start seeing some other things popping out too when the, when the uh, rifle head spacing is run away, uh, run, running away, uh, you may have a misfires and things like this. So definitely I would advise you when you have a case where the rifle is closing on the no-go gauge, have an experienced gunsmith to look into the gun and let him evaluate what is happening. Don't listen uh, to some, you know, crazy people on the internet or whatever like us, <laughs> but like take it to, to the to the specialist and because at this point this is about the safety and that's right. the bottom line. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we, we it's all fun and games till something bad happens. That being said. Fortunately, the way how the AK is built, and I have seen uh, many uh, AKs which exploded because of the detonation outside the chamber, yep. I will tell you the biggest danger will come from the dust cover, because usually the dust cover has a tendency to fly away and hit the people, punish them right away. That's a punishment <laughs> right away in the forehead. But other than this, you will be pretty much safe because everything is contained inside uh, the receiver. So that's a good thing, but we don't want to go there, you know, stay away from <laughs> explosions outside the chamber. All right, Chase, anything else to add on this subject? Well, I mean, one other aspect is, is you're studying the progressive wear. If you mm -hmm. see something that you believe is changing, you should notice uh, distinctly a difference between the no-go and field in terms of progression. And what I mean by that is, what you want is like, this is the no-go, it should start to turn, it does. Like, I can't push mm -hmm. it back right now, but it's not turned all the way, like the carrier wouldn't go home. And if I look, I can see a measurement of, by eye, you know, roughly about you know, 200 thousandths between it and the rail. And what you should notice when you put the field in is that it shouldn't come anywhere near close to where the 
no-go gauge was. This should still turn and start, but it's turned, the gap mm -hmm. is bigger, and that's what you want to see is progression from one, two, and then closing on the go. Also, I will tell you from my experience what I have seen, the, the rifles which are, are closing on the no-go gauge, just look at the, at the locking locks and everything, and if you will see any deformations or the locking shoulder on the Trujon, okay, time out, and basically, basically stop it. All right, guys, if you have any questions, please let us know, but hopefully this video, once for all, cleared the subject and you have a better understanding right now about the head spacing and what the head spacing uh, is, uh, how the head spacing is set on AK and how to check it out. Okay, thanks for watching. Thanks for being with us.